Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're going to be looking at Construct's latest behaviour, the follow behaviour. Let's get started. So first of all, this is still in beta, so I'll show you how to get to beta in just a second, but we have got a brand new feature, We've got loads of brand new features, which is really, really great. Now to access this, you just go to the Construct main page, go to what's new, and then we're just going to change from stable releases to all releases, and we can go to the latest beta and launch R384. Once you've selected the beta and you've created your brand new world, you can start using the brand new follow behavior. So I'm gonna add this to my enemy, and you'll find it with the movement options near the bottom. And we get a huge amount of options that we can start using. So let's talk about what they do. I'm gonna start by just talking about the first two, and then we'll work with the event sheet, and then we'll talk about these ones after, because these ones you might use a lot less. So first of all, we've got two modes, time and distance. And this is basically saying, do you want an object to follow you after a certain period of time, or do you want them to keep a certain distance away from you? So for instance, we could say, I want them to always remain 100 pixels away from me. Now, it doesn't matter what you set up on this side. If you've got nothing in your event sheet, it doesn't matter. So let's move to our event sheet, and we're going to add our first event. We've got this one here for a bit of testing later on. But we're just going to say system on start of layout enemy scroll down until you see the follow options follow object and we want to follow our player now i'm going to follow player floor and then from current position means they'll start following from where they currently are instead of teleporting at least that's what i think it does and then i'm going to hit done and now if we play this straight away our enemy follows our player always tries to keep 100 pixels behind and something like this before was really complex to do. You could definitely add pathfinding, but the enemy would just sit on top of the player. You could add in other means, but there was more faults that would happen, like what happens when you got close to a wall. Um, but again, this is really, really good. Such a really lovely, simple behavior to use and just gives you so much control. And even if we just take our player floor and swap it for our player platformer and just move them over to the other side, make them a little bit smaller this will still work so you can see now it follows my play and you can see some issues with this you can see that my sort of enemy floats in the sky so there's definitely some fixes that we still need to do with this so let's have a look at how we can improve this so easiest thing we can do is click on our enemy and instead of having the follow mode be distance I'm going to change it to time now, time is per second, so 100 seconds is a little bit extreme. I'm going to go down to just one second, and this small change actually fixes our earlier problem. So let's test it again. So you can see now as I move around, my enemy or my follower follows around with me, and again, it feels a little bit more like he belongs in the platform world than when he was before he was sort of floating in the air. And all this is really doing this behavior is just keeping track of the movements I've done as a player and then just reversing those back with a second delay to a different object. And again, really, really useful, really powerful and takes very little work. The only downside with the time method is you do get the object on top of you. So once I've stopped, it will move on top. But again, there's other fixes that we can do to get around that. So let's have a look at the other properties that come with this new behavior. So first we've got is max delay. This is how much time it's going to record. In this case, it is set to 100 seconds. A minute and a half where it can remember your movements. And this is gonna be useful for another trick I'm gonna show you in just a bit. History rate is almost like the frame rate. So how many times per second is it remembering your X and Y coordinates? Again, the bigger this number is, the more accurate it's gonna be with the trade-off of CPU performance. You can actually make it just follow just one coordinate. So it's currently following the X and Y, but you could change this off. So it just follows your Y behavior or just your X behavior. And more exciting is the Z elevation. I find it really, really useful that these new behaviors are coming in with 3D capabilities built in already, which is really, really nice. Follow width basically says that if the player's width changes at all, does the enemies or the followers change as well? Same for the height, same for the angle. So this might be good if you're doing a car game, for instance, and your car turns, it will change the angle to match with that. Follow opacity and visibility. So 
if your object goes invisible, does the follower also go invisible? Same for the opacity. And then destroyed. If the player gets destroyed, does the follower get destroyed? And your usual, is it enabled, disabled? So that's it from my end, but I want to show you some example projects that have been made for us by Construct that show off a lot more what this can do. So I'm now on the example page. There's four examples here. I'm going to go through each one. Uh, before we do, I just want to just say the example page, if you've not been on it for a while, it's absolutely fantastic. There's been some really amazing examples put in the last three or four big versions. So if you've not been on in a while, please check this out because it's really, really fantastic. The time that's been put into this, um, just big credit to the contract team. So I'm actually skipping the first one because it's very similar to what we've done already, but this one just shows how if you've got an effect on your object, it can be recreated in the follower object as well. So in my case, it's just changing the color of the object to different colors. And with a second delay, it changes the follower's color as well. So again, being able to pass on effects is really, really cool. Where we really start to see the power of this behavior is when it comes to recording. So I'm gonna press the start recording button. I'm gonna run around for a little bit. So we'll go up here. We'll basically do a full loop of this circuit. And then I'm going to jump off and die and stop recording. Now what I can do is hit the replay button and it will replay all my movements. So this would be really good if you want to show off how the player progressed through a level, if you want to show what they did on their last particular shot, if it's maybe a golf game. This again is just really, really great and really, really powerful and we can restart and do the whole thing again. Now after watching this, some of you might have an idea of how we can take this even further. And don't worry, I've got you covered. This final example that is on here is the concept from Braid, Prince of Persia, where we can actually rewind time. So I'm just going to run around for a little bit and I'm going to end by just about killing myself and then I'm going to stop by pressing R and I've just about to die, but don't worry because I can just rewind and go back to an earlier part in the game. So the ability to rewind and then play again it's an absolutely great concept. And this has been done in Construct before. I've seen people do this concept before. However, this is so much more easier to do now and so much more accurate. So let's quickly have a look at the code for this example project. Now, this might look confusing and looks like there's lots of code, but a lot of this is just code comments and just quality of life stuff like showing some text on the screen. The main thing is we've got this rewind time that's keeping track of how far through the follow time are we? So zero will be the current plane's position. And as we add to that, we can then go back through the previous place position all the way back to the very start of the level. And then we've got this action called follow self. This is one of the actions that is built in. And it basically means I want to keep track of my own movements as opposed to following a different object's movement. And then when we press R, we've got a simple toggle that either goes to rewind mode or turns off rewind mode. And then from there, we've got play mode and rewind mode. So play mode is just playing the game normally. And then rewind mode, all we're doing is checking if we press left or right, and we either add to rewind time or take away from it, and then set the player's position to that rewind time. That is kind of it to get this working. So again, if you want to have a look at this code properly, it is an example browser. But that is it for today. The follow behavior. Do you think it is a great new feature for Construct or do you think it's just another behavior you're going to forget about? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.